Um, so the keenly observant among you will notice that um, I'm in new digs. So that's why the channel's been a little quiet. Um, everything's okay, I've just been moving. Um, so thanks for those who, who asked. Um, so I've had a specific request from Eric to uh, about solo drills for people who are just learning silver. Um, and yes, I use these things. Um, and in particular, I like to sort of string a whole series of physical movements together um, that you can sort of teach people the first cut and then the second cut and do one, two, and then the third cut and then do one, two, three, and slowly build up until you've got quite a complex pattern of movement that covers um, most of the sort of physical movements that you will use in attack and defense within the system. Um, and I don't have any sort of set way of doing this. Um, it's actually, actually, I think it's important to kind of mix it up um, and change these things occasionally so people don't get used to just one pattern of movement so that they don't sort of, you know, automatically do things and stop thinking about it. Um, but anyway, so here is an example of something that's useful for silver. Um, so I'll show you the full drill, then we'll sort of go through it step at a time and I'll talk about the utility of each individual step um, and then do the full drill again. So I hope that this is useful. So uh, cut number one is of the downright blow. The obviously utility of that is that it is a basic attack. Okay, now even if Simon is in guard like that, the idea of stepping around to the right is that I can easily strike him even over his sword. And should he parry it and repost, I fly out by recovering into guard. The importance of the footwork is this, in that having got here, if Simon reposts at me and I stay here, I have to get my foot all the way up to here before it actually protects me. If, however, I make this retreating set with my left foot, my sword's only going to get half that distance. So I can strike, get my sword to here, which is not going to save me, but as I swivel, that brings my sword around in front of me. So that's up with the first part of the drill. Second part is obviously a simple reverse cut at the exposed arm there. So the thrust from here is a perfectly reasonable attack to make. However, it's usually going to draw a sort of mass of gun type arrow. Okay? So the reason we do this as a combination is because the instinctive reaction to this allows me to do that. So I throw this thrust, draw the parry, roll around with a cut. And the footwork on that is again my standard triangle step. I do this stepping to the right and then hit on the corrective step. The high horizontal tondo, the cut number six, Obviously, it's a perfectly reasonable attack to make, but it's more important as a defense. When I'm in garden, this is an obvious target. Should my opponent take the bait, that wants to be my parry. A horizontal cut into broad ward. Okay? Now, 
you see a lot of people will try and carry it like this. This is sort of the instinctive thing to do. You can go to the garden for me. Not there. It's not feet. If I throw the reverse blow and Simon parries in an outside guard, you'd see perfectly reasonable. However, if I see it coming, I can roll underneath it because this action leaves a big gap. Whereas this action crosses the face, prevents anyone rolling under with an imbricata. You can do the high reverse cut again. Ideally, I hit him at the same time. But if I don't, I get a perfectly reasonable parry and I can follow up with a repost. The cut number five, the tondo, the obvious utility of that is that it's a cat that comes in underneath the hilt of people in forehand ward. So I can, from here my extension is, draws that kind of high parry because it looks like it's going at the head and I can simply turn my wrist and come in underneath at the waist. Cut number four, having swung a downright blow, it's quite common to swing through into underarm or something similar to that. We know people did it because Swetnam mentions it. Okay, so even though it's not in silver, you will end up here and you need to know what to do from it. Okay, so from here, I can obviously use that as an attack, as a rising cut at whatever target I like. However, I can also use this as a defense. As a defense. So if Simon swings at me, By bringing it up, like so, I can parry the blow, and that will either bounce off that way, or if you come in a little bit further that way, roll back in the garden, like so. So that has utility in attack and defence. Now the cut number three um, is useful because, as you can possibly see, it's orange this way a bit. Simon's garden has drifted up towards St. George because his gear makes that uncomfortable. So it's that, and people do this, okay? And when this happens, this rising cut from the right can take advantage of that gap and come up underneath the sword and into the wrist. So this rising cut finishes in this position, which Silver calls the Mount Tanta. He only barely mentions it, but fortunately Swetnam tells us more about it. It's in Swetnam. Swetnam tells us what it is. It is a thrust in the manner of an imbricata um, and specifically made stepping forward with the left leg. Okay? So from this guard here, I can make this thrust. And I can make it on either side of my opponent's weapon. Okay? As a left-hander, I will just point out that I have to resort to this a lot as the, as the throw, throw a blow at me there, as the equivalent of garden for me, okay? So it does get used particularly with and against left-handers. So from here, against this guard, I can throw this cut, sorry, throw this thrust into the chest like so, stepping forward and left with my left leg. My opponent is, I presumably going to parry this, and I sweep through with the reverse cut. So it's a mirror image of the garden for me. That action. Okay, against an outside guard, thrust, cut. Finally, I can not just make descending blows, and descending thrusts from open, I can actually come up underneath. And this is what this last action is about because it does surprise people when you do that. Okay? And if you come up at this nice rising angle, even if again they drop into Bastard Garden as they see it coming, well, you missed the tie there. Instead, you go out and actually try and carry it. That sort of thing happens. Okay, because from here, 
Oh, here it comes up in the... Oh, no. It's actually coming up quite high. So that's how that works. 